What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures and what you should be watching for for Friday. Now before I break anything down, I got to quickly mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner so take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this and not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. The best part is any could be a free Tesla share, a free Apple share, or a mix of all of them. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just one week, so check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Looking at the markets, guys, we have some very interesting things that are going on. So on the SPY... As you guys can see, we had this very nice looking bull flag set up. We had a pennant that formed and we got a nice break to the upside from there. Now, after this whole setup, this was just a continuation of the whole bull flag. And we did start to look like an accumulation right over here. And we started pumping up pretty hard. So why did this happen? Like I mentioned yesterday, we had a big day because of the Fed minutes. Basically, in short, what happened was the Fed came out and they mentioned that there is something that they mentioned that's not the best for the stock market. And that's the fact that the terminal funds rate is going to be higher than they normally would have anticipated. And that is it going to about 5.6% or so, maybe like 5.75% in a more like extreme sense. But overall, that's not the worst of news because they also gave us a good piece of news for the short term. And that's the fact that they do expect or they, they find it very likely the fed rate hike is going to be 50 basis points for december this is a sign of the fed slowing down on the rate in which they raise the rates i hope that made sense so basically before they were giving us 75 basis point hikes right that was a faster rate that they were increasing the rate and now they're going to be giving us 50 basis points so they're going to slow down a bit on how fast they're raising them and that's good for the markets because the market is almost fully priced that in and for the short term we could see the market continue to pump now what's very interesting about the market is thursday we're going to be closed because of thanksgiving all right that's why i'm talking about friday for friday i expect not the best price action i don't expect it to be that like super crazy because we do have a very short day there could be some profit takers coming and the market's only open for a couple of hours but what's good about this market is if you want to interpret it that way for the bulls the puts to call ratio on spy all right check it out it's 2.03 which means that there's a two to one ratio of people that loaded up on puts then calls the majority of investors are loaded up on puts that expire on friday and as you know i mean the market's pumping so those people are getting destroyed on those contracts depending on where they got them though but for the most part i do believe most people are not doing as well on those and the market makers do not want to pay people all that money right so it's very likely they're going to help the market at least hold up for the next trading day which is going to be friday and maybe for part of next week too all right looking at the flow you're seeing a lot of people selling puts and buying calls for many many tickers out there we're also seeing people buying puts on gold very interesting to see and <coughs> excuse me sorry guys and all this like buying shows that the market is becoming more bullish for the super short term but that doesn't change the fact that it could become bearish on like the longer term uh, going into like next year but what I'm essentially seeing, though, is I'm not going to like talk too much about the long term, guys. Let's just, let's just talk about the short term. All right. This is the setup on SPY. I'm sure you guys can see the pattern here. We push up to the upper trend line of the broadening descending wedge. We come down to the bottom. We push up to the top, the bottom top, come close to the bottom. Then we get a nice bounce. All right. It's looking like. This thing is going to just keep going. We have an uptrend being respected. I could draw another trend line. I'm just not going to do it, though. And we have a target of about 408 a share. And that happens to be a little bit above this gap fill area around this like 407 range, very close to 407. So it, it looks more bullish than bearish. I mentioned to everyone that if we saw SPY break above 403, that would be a very bullish signal and this thing would fly. We didn't quite get there, but we did make a new high compared to the high we made couple of days ago when spy hit about 402 point like 402.5 or maybe a little lower so we did make a new high and it looks like spy wants to continue going because of the positive sentiment 
for Friday, I, I don't expect it to be as crazy. I don't expect SPY to hit like 408 that quickly. I mean, if it still could, very possible. We actually closed with a nice uh, inverse head and shoulders right here. So there's a chance this thing might just continue to pop on Friday. However, it, it's going to be a short day. Many people are going to be taking profits, so I can't guarantee we're going to go all the way up to 408. We could just pump a little bit, though. Very, very possible. But I still could see this thing hitting that 408 range maybe sometime next week. And if I'm wrong, then so be it. This thing may just pop really hard. But until then, the market still looks more bullish than bearish for the short term. What else is good, and I mentioned this yesterday, if you guys were watching my video, I mentioned Tesla was respecting this channel, went back and forth and back and forth. We broke out of the channel, and I mentioned if we do that, it's going to be bullish. This thing's going to push. My target on Tesla was 175 to 180. That's where I thought Tesla would end up going. We ended up going all the way up to 183. This thing broke out, and looks like it's going for that 186 very, very soon. I think there was a gap. We already filled the gap. That's incredible. Very, very nice job, Tesla. Um, what else I'm going to be watching is 185 to 186. Break past that. The 190s are very possible on this thing. For Friday in particular, I don't really think Tesla's going to be that bullish. It might be kind of sideways, maybe consolidate a bit. But for the week uh, that's coming up after, that's next week, 190s, easy, easy 190s could come on Tesla. The whole setup looks bullish. And this also resembles a head and shoulders, an inverse head and shoulders, excuse me, right here. So could we get a nice continuation? It's very possible. We just slowly start to stair step our way up this time. It still looks more bullish than bearish, but I do think we might see some consolidation first before we continue as the bulls are stepping in. Apple's looking pretty good too. Similar setup, right? This looks like a head and shoulders, but Apple's going to be hit by strong resistance around this 152 level. So about 153, I do think Apple's going to retest that zone and maybe get a breakout above it. But overall, like I mentioned, this thing still has potential to push up. I'd still be very careful. It looks like we have another like inverse head and shoulders within the inverse head and shoulders. Pretty funny to see. Once again, a pretty nice way to close for the weekend. Neo looks pretty good too. Uh, QQQ, inverse head and shoulders again, being dictated by SPY and Tesla. and Not SPY, uh, Apple and Tesla, excuse me. And on top of that, you can see we got the nice gap. I was talking about this yesterday, the 288 level. The next one I was watching was 290. I thought we could touch it. We came kind of close. We have potential to break 290. Maybe on Friday we test it, but I think next week we could actually break it and trade a little bit above it here and there. So it looks pretty good right now. All right. Uh, gold, I mentioned this to everyone. Gold would likely end up coming down. That is what ended up happening. Let me use a different time frame. Is this even working? There we are. Sorry about that. So gold did get a break to the downside. Is there a gap here? There is a gap, I think. Tiny gap, we could end up filling it. So 66.36, I could see it coming down there. And then for the Dixie, I like to call it the Dixie. It's also the, it's known as the dollar index. Uh, this thing is starting to come down again. And I mentioned the potential of this thing coming down because of the market pumping and also because of the VIX. This thing could come back down to this 105 to 104.6 zone right here. This level right here, I could see this thing still come down a little bit more, right? And if you look at the daily candle, it's pretty bearish looking. Once again, good for the markets. And finally, the VIX went exactly where I predicted it would go. My target for the VIX was 20.6. It went to about 20.3, so very, very close. And my prediction was the gap fill area right here. Now, what is concerning is I do think some bears might try to defend their position here. So we might see the VIX kind of trade sideways here, maybe come a little lower to the 19, very possible. But it's not going to like come crashing down much more from here, which is why the market is not going to be rallying all the way up to like, for example, SPY is not going to like 420, 430, 440 a share. It's going to get slowed down and stopped at that trend line, which is very close. And it's going to trade sideways. So I do think VIX might make a similar move right over here before this thing gets a big bounce when the, a lot of the buyers step in. So be very careful with that for the markets. But nonetheless, guys, short term, if you look at the VIX, it still looks more bearish. We could still see this thing come down a bit and the market pump a little bit more from here. Anyways, that's what I have for this video. For Friday, I expect maybe a more sideways day with some bullish price action uh, put into it. 
However, I expect even more bullish price action for next week. I think we're going to get a pretty nice move, so we could actually see the market pump. That's what I have for this one. Please enjoy Thanksgiving, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon, because the long-term future is still incredibly bright, and peace out.